Ni hao ma, math ninja here. So I promised one of my uh, fellow teachers at the school that I promised to show a great application of number theory. You know, one of the best applications I've ever seen to the real world is RSA, the British Shamir Edelman uh, algorithm to a public key discography. Okay, so RSA, no, it's better. So RSA is what is it essentially? Well, first of all, what's cryptography? It's a it's a cryptography scheme. It's a public key cryptography scheme, meaning that, well, first of all, what's in cryptography? It's the art of decoding, I mean, encoding, making a message secret, and then only a few, letting a few people encode things. So if you view it mathematically, then this is really just a mapping. A mapping of where well, we can take a message, turn it into a number. That's easy. All you do is just make the let numbers and the sequences. The number and the position corresponds to uh, to a prime and this multi and multiplication. For example, A B C. The first letter corresponds to first the first letter corresponds to the uh, first prime raised to A, which says the first is one. B is two. So B in the second position corresponds to the second prime. So three to two. And C corresponds to the third prime, which is five. Five to this three. The C corresponds to three. So this, you know, this, this is a way to easily represent uh, words and messages as numbers. So if you think about it, all the, all encoding does is takes a number and turns it to another, another number. Decoding maps it back. So we so really cryptography is about invertible functions, mapping and mapping back. Because you know, we want a function. We want to be able to turn any number. Uh, we we like to be able to turn a function, uh, a, um, a number, a message, into a unique number, and we don't want it to be. Uh, we want it to be injective because if we had two messages mapped to the same number, then you know just, there's no uniqueness. It's, we can we can map it back and just end up with. We want the messages to correspond. The, the encoded messages to correspond to a unique decoded message. We don't want. Uh, two mass messages to map to the same number, to map, map to the same uh, ciphertext, because then it's just, we cannot decode it. It just, it has to, it, decoding is a uniqueness thing. It's, so, but that's one part of cryptography is uh, invertibility. We are able to decode a message, encode a message, and decode it to get it back. It's an invertible operation. But the second key of cryptography is difficulty invertibility. Difficult invertibility. So in other words, it should be easy to encode. But if you don't have a key, if you don't have some element that the creator, the, person, the creator, the guy who should be able to decode have, then it should be difficult. So this is a difficult in invertibility. And then defining a, the, the decoded message is easy, but decoding it without some key is hard. So what is public key cryptography? So public key cryptography is analogous to anyone can encode a message. I mean, definition, anyone can encode a message. So using, so the guy who creates a scheme, right, he releases a public key, which anyone can use to encode a message. But only he can decode the message. Only the person who created the scheme can decode the message. Public key cryptography, the public can encode, only one person can decode. You have a, you have a box. Anyone can take a message, put it in the box, and lock it. But only a few only the person with the key can unlock it. Of course there are some there are some some uh, attacks against such a scheme. For example, let's say the attacker Eve can take her own lock and put it on the box. Things like that, so that no one can open it. Eve can seal the box. But you know, I'm not going to handle that. I'm just going to explain how number theory had such an impact on the world with RSA scheme. So here's an incredible fact that I talked about in one of my further lectures 
is from is Euler's theorem. One of Euler's theorem. Euler's is a bunch of theorems, but this is another theory. And this is just so important because so many of our business transactions and highly important are the nationwide security. Most of it is based well, it's based on DES, but RSA because DES is fast. RSA is also very important. It's a hard to break cryptogra cryptographic scheme. I think the, the last one, the last last time RSA was broken was it took a huge network of computers and three months. I think that was the last time. I'm not sure, but it takes a long time. And when the first came out, it took three years or something. A long time. The great ones. Okay. Anyways, so all is there. This is the first thing we'll get. All is there. That's the first thing we'll get. All this theorem says that if the greatest common divisor of A comma B equals one for two um for two integers A and B, then A raised to five of B is identically one mod B. That's the first thing. And remember, phi is the total order torsion function. Secondly, you have to use the fact that phi, with the number of order torsion function, is number of integers from 1 up to, but not, it doesn't really matter, up to b that are relatively prime to b. It only matters in the case of b equals 1 to 1. We're not going to use that case. And remember that phi, so phi b equals p minus 1 because, or p prime, because everything. Less than p, except uh, yeah, less than b, except one will be relatively prime. Now, relatively prime really just means the greatest common divisor of a common b equals one. All means that the greatest common the, the only factors they have in common is just one. So, also another theorem says if I, this is just obvious. If I pq, this one takes a little bit of work. Somewhat you can also do another counting number of things. Uh, but if pq are distinct primes. E, then phi of pq equals p minus 1 times q minus 1. For pq, uh, distinct components. Okay. These are the big theorems that you'll need. You also need something like, you also need basic to that. Uh, and I'll, I'll, I'll explain it when we get to that. Uh, remember, um, to my earlier lecture, just look up Tomas' last theorem and, and Bayesian's identity. Well, actually, basically, I think this is my Fermat's, uh, not last year, Fermat's little theorem that I So, if you want to see these two and the proofs of them, just uh, search my YouTube page. So, all right, so how it works. So, a great thing about natural numbers is that there exists a unique prime factorization. This is according to the fundamental theorem of arithmetic. So, Every number can be broken up into unique product of primes. Okay. The Euler's theorem and the five function. We're going to use that. So, here's the big thing. Given a number, suppose I have only two prime factors, right? Two humongous primes. This is going to take a long time. You have to go from one. To like square root of that number, to the square root of n, searching all these huge numbers for the prime that divides the, the, the number n. If n only has two prime factors pq, and pq are huge, you have to search all these huge numbers to find the prime that divides n. It's only one of two possibilities. And if they're big enough, then it's going to take a long time. So, and you know, and even if you Release the pen. You don't know what the time factors are, and that's hard. So, releasing the n does not mean that the audience, does not mean the public know what the prime factors are. You can find it, but it's going to take you a while. Or at least the technology we have today. If we had something called quantum computers, it may get to be a little bit more difficult. I mean, that would be easy. The quantum computers, it's supposed to be super easy. So, like, what a quantum computer actually is, I really don't know. I'm not a physicist. But I do know is that it's something that's just built to factor. 